What's up guys, I'm Just a Gamer and I'm back with another reaction video. I'm a little late on this, this actually came out like, I think a week ago, not a week ago, but like five days ago. And it's a South of Midnight uh, making of documentary. And this is a game that if you've seen my reactions to their previous trailers that I've been really looking forward to, I'm really curious about, and it's just something that I'm really vibing with. So I'm really interested to see what they're going to show here and what they're going to talk about. So yeah, I'm excited. So enough of me talking, let's get into it. In many ways, Midnight is about bringing people together and magic is all around you. It's about learning empathy for people who aren't like you. It's finding hidden Ooh, strengths. we're getting new scenes. It's so beautifully powerful. And I think that it just sort of leaps off the screen. There's so much atmospheric potential. The landscapes, they're almost like a character in and of itself. We made these concept songs for all of the creatures. It's not often you get that creative license. Her journey paralleled with my journey and like many of our journeys. Did mama know about this? She discovers the world is more than what she has known it to be. Coming up against all of these monsters and large creatures where oh, she can communicate with that them, looks awesome. heal them, learn from them. Watching Hazel just fly through the world doing all of these things is just a lot of fun. And I love the like the that's not stutteriness, but like what's the term for like uh, when they used it on it's running on twos or it's like every other frame? Like this gives us like this weird like little stop. I kind of love that. So when I was a kid, I spent a lot of my free time after I had exhausted all the books I wanted to read, exploring sort of all of these abandoned farms and forgotten places and you really when you walk through a forest in in the south you never know what you're gonna find now as a kid beautiful i mean i would already be <laughs> i would already be at the backside of this little swamp it looks, during the day beautiful but at night wild that shit that can, can get so scary looking and so gigantic you didn't have to climb them mysterious buildings and they seem to have never served any purpose at all so you wonder, what was this for? Why is this here? Where did these people who built it go? What happened? It doesn't take too long before the accumulation of mysteries demand an answer. And my imagination provided the answers. So I started inventing adventure stories as I was tramping around and exploring these places that usually featured monsters. And monsters became my best friends. That exhilarating sense of discovery, never knowing what you'll find, this sort of thing is what I wanted to create in a game. The genesis of Midnight was my uh, It's like every frame is like a painting almost. Letter ...to the south. And because it's running on twos, it's so much easier to get like a still, like see where you could just put a still and it'd just be we a beautiful painting. in Montreal which is in Quebec, in Canada, and is pretty far from the South. <laughs> lucky to have some team members who grew up in the South. None of us were experts in Southern folklore, but we had this monumental task of building a world that was iconic, did feel authentically Southern. And it was with a bunch of creatures that no one in Montreal had ever heard of. I mean, there are lots of people in the South who haven't heard of some of these cryptids. We reached out to Donna Washington, who is a world-renowned storyteller. And she came to our offices and she told a story to the entire company at the time. And it was captivating, it was mesmerizing. So I spent I don't even remember what it was, two or three days, telling stories and taking questions and just sort of immersing the team in folklore. The stories that come out of the, the That's southern, awesome. well, gothic stories is kind of what you're dealing with in South of Midnight, are all stories about surviving in difficult times. They're about facing the things that scare you. They're about tricking the things that scare you. They're about laughing at the things that scare you. 
But what was interesting with that team was as they got into the stories and they, they sort of joined us, it became clear, it became more obvious to them what the stories were about. We liked the idea of not just the South, but the Southern Gothic slant towards the Deep South. The stories are usually set in a small town. They usually involve something supernatural and they're usually soaked in atmosphere. There's a thing that I like to think about called like an imaginary nostalgia for a place. So the idea is that, you know, it's okay if players have not experienced like where these genres came from originally, but we're sort of reimagining them and celebrating them again to create like a really cohesive atmospheric world. And so for us, how I would have translated that to something visual is really leaning on the weight of the past. That's a big thing for Southern Gothic. Old decaying buildings. Honor the road, story, honor the past, but places, put your own flair on houses, it. Places that tell a lot of old stories. And then there's the supernatural sort of magic realism element with ghosts and myths and legends. A lot of creatures in uh, these folklore, they, they sort of balance on the edge between the known and the unknown. Almost all of the creatures within South of Midnight are inspired by folk tales from the various regions of the South. And if not a folk tale, it's taken from an urban legend that's well on its way to becoming a folk tale. Something's out there, clearly, something anomalous. People become obsessed with learning about them. But to date, no one's really gathered any conclusive evidence or proof that they exist or really identified what they are. The creatures oh. are all inspired wow, that's by creepy. real folk tales. However, there's not a lot of visual information on the exact look of these creatures, which gave us a lot of flexibility to interpret them. For me, getting the tone, mood, and getting, making sure they had this sort of dark elegance to them was really important. So while you'll see haint everywhere, every region has a distinctive creature, and they rule entirely. So. Each kingdom is structured so that you understand how did a creature become a monster. The sort of variety of creatures that we have in South of Midnight is really cool. The creatures and just sort of like the wild embodiment of like nature, but also human anxiety is very interesting. But also like human errors and challenges and the ways that we hurt each other sort of manifest as creatures as well. There's some sort of whispered rumors about creatures that you shouldn't cross, that Hazel has to. Each creature that Hazel meets throughout her journey is going to have a specific impact on her. Some will be forcing her to face things that she has run away from. Others will simply create a huge uh, sense of fear in her and wow. summon her to dig deeper and to believe in herself. Now, Scale of some of these boss fights is way bigger than I thought they'd be. Creatures, but there are some that are not really alive. They are from a darker place. Uh, driven by trauma. They want to feed on guilt and fear. And these creatures, she has to destroy. But the creatures with human souls, she wants to help. Magical realism is part of the, the vision for South of Midnight. Magic is real. Monsters are real. The unexpected can happen at any time. But the farther you go from the town center or the urban center, uh, the more magical the world becomes. And it becomes a driving force because once you start to notice even minor details that are out of place or unusual, you want more. And that's the way we built Midnight. For someone who, you know, is a practitioner of a fundamental magical form, Hazel, your character, I think she likes it too. I think if you're making a game set, making in games is a magic location. All right. You have to go to those locations as much as possible to sort of pick up on the vibe of these places. So 
In that spirit, I devised two week-long excursions slash research trips to the South for all of the directors. Because South of Midnight is set in a sort of twisted alternate version of the Deep South where we use different landscapes that are iconic to the Deep South. So we went to the Appalachians, we went to the swamps, we went to New Orleans, we went through the Delta, and South of Midnight has a bunch of archetypal locations from the Deep South. Hazel Flood, our main protagonist, she gets projected into this sort of folkloric version of the Deep South. We have the, the swamps, we have the Delta, we have the Appalachians, and we have um, an area that's inspired by New Orleans. The landscapes are, they're almost like a character in and of itself in the game. A lot of people who escaped Again, beautiful. from the plantation would go live in the swamps of like uh, the Carolinas, um, people in like Florida and other places, they would go to the swamps because very few people are gonna follow you into a swamp and they made life work there and I think that's really, really cool. A lot of people might hear about the Underground Railroad, but you know, a lot of people don't know that the Great Dismal Swamp was like a stop on the way. Imagining people build sediments out here is like really wild, really, really wild. It's very inspirational though. It is, because this is not a place I feel like you live Voluntarily, Willingly, yeah. like you're doing it out of necessity. You got a big old mosquito on your head. Mm. Did you get it? <laughs> I did. So it actually is really nice to normalize the setting. And even as a game setting, this isn't this isn't a usual setting. I mean, it's a little daunting trying to bring that history to the forefront. You feel yeah. like a great degree of um, responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> I like to make worlds that people might be familiar with in some way or another, but they might not realize Untingly they beautiful. And twist them and sort of celebrate them. And I feel like we don't give players enough credit for wanting to see new worlds. So as we're going through each of these locations, we're going to be introduced to a new creature, a new person. Um, we get a really interesting look into uh, what's happened to them and what we can do to possibly help them. So that mood is then going to expand out into the environment. So we have a central theme. How can we reflect that in the environment? Is it going to be dark and gloomy? Is it scary? If so, it's going to affect the time of day. Um, if it's something a bit more cheery, you know, uh, we can have that happening in the morning. The artists on our team have done such an incredible job really fleshing it out and, and making sure that the biome they're given really feels like that biome and I would encourage people who are playing the game or watching gameplay to just look around and see what type of vegetation is there, what's on the ground, what materials, you know, are you walking over. Just look at the animals, like there's so many little details to make you feel like you're in the deep south. I wanted to try and ground the game in the deep south by establishing very authentic soundscapes. And we did that by employing Andy Martin to go actually into the swamps of Louisiana and record over the course of six months, I believe, at different times of year, to capture the sounds of the South and the swamps. And we also worked with Thomas Rex Beverly to get sounds of the Kentucky mountains and Tennessee uh, landscapes and soundscapes. They really, they went all in Look, trying to capture that feel. Where they go here, she. Because this game is so very specific, you know, Hazel being yeah. from the southeast, Hazel being an athlete, you know, being a track star, and I wanted the intricacies of those things to really pop out in Hazel, and it's the type of subtlety that really brings a character to life. Hi, hon. I'm ready to go. Cool, let's rock. Both Adrian and Nona, who play Hazel, have strong ties to the Southeast. Cool, so this first line, uh, we're just gonna do three in a row, and this is you walking up to Bo's house. You had to grow up too fast. Nice. When I first seen uh, a picture of Hazel, I was like, oh my gosh, 
that could really be me. Just her facial st structure resembled mine. So what I did is I dressed exactly like Hazel <laughs> in my audition. And um, I had fun with it. Well, I'm mom, I'll clean it up. Jeez. Your great grandmother made this. And you never told me that. And I would say that some of the details that I really hone in on is the accent. Oh my God. Who would do that to a kid? My family's from North Carolina. So I had a background of what that accent would sound like. And then I had a little bit of training to help me with just to really precisely place it where it needed to be. And then with her attitude, I just got to make sure I am in a spunky, ready pace. You know, she has sassiness, she has a modernness to her, but she's also respectful of her elders. She's also very empathetic. She's very driven, competitive. And I remember just feeling so connected. Her journey paralleled with my journey and like many of our journeys. This story centers around a young black girl, so I couldn't help but be just in love with that idea. And I think Hazel in the writing and the way that she's designed. Oh, it's two different actresses. So one for the motion capture, one for the and voice. I think that it just sort of leaps off the screen and the way that she speaks and carries herself, the way that she allows herself to be vulnerable and scared and confused and unprepared, I think is something I'm really excited that we get to follow in this story and her story. I think they mentioned it earlier, but I didn't catch it. The handcrafted style is applied into everything. There's something soulful about that, and I think it resonates with a lot of people, and it felt really appropriate for this deep south, a southern gothic dark fantasy to have this sort of organic, natural touch to the style. Who what? Yeah, I saw you jumping. We had to figure out a style where uh, things are exaggerated. There's little thumbprints and imperfections, and everything kind of has this, this sort of twisted feeling to it. So we went and visited this stop motion studio in Montreal called Clyde Henry, and they have a really special style that has this sort of dark, twisted eeriness that was something we wanted for South of Midnight. And we actually looked at their maquettes and looked at how they were made. And then the artists went back and we had to create techniques to reverse engineer how things are actually made by hand. Yeah, everything from the foliage to the props to the buildings to the characters, they all have a handcrafted look to them. Maybe I could help bottle up the paint. So I'm the last person left here. So the animation style is just stop motion. So a lot of the narrative of the game is that you have Hazel who is, you know, while searching for her mother, coming across a number of people uh, in, in the world who have gone through things, they have experiences. Everyone's got something that's made them a little rough. Um, and, you know, while she has the power to weave and heal these sort of things, there becomes a sort of understanding of people's imperfections, those experiences yeah, yeah. that they've had, yeah, sort of define who they are as, as a character. It's nighttime, you can leave, but they're starting to go banging on door, door to door to each house. And so the stop motion treatment gives us the opportunity to bring in those little moments of, of friction, of in, imperfection, individuality. You feel it in the animation, you feel it in the motion, you feel it in performances, and that matches what you feel in the narrative and the relationships you have with characters. One take. Yeah. Hazel is coming into her power. She's a young woman who, through this adventure, finds the true nature in herself as a leader. She finds her magical powers. She's awakening to a world of possibilities she did not know existed. So the main character that you control, Hazel, is a weaver. She's inseparable from her weaver abilities. All of them are calculated to make you more aware or continuously aware of how the weaver sees the world and how she can pull from the world to traverse in extreme ways that normal humans simply can't do. The most important metaphor about your abilities as a player is the perception of trauma in creatures. You can see it, it's like a cancer. So the ability to weave is you can take these 
big masses of dark energy and release it from each other, release it so it can, so the good can get in, so the good can thrive. And that's what I love about Hazel Flood is the things that she's doing are all a part of healing and helping others. It's inspired by textiles and crochet and knitting, and we wanted to sort of take back this, which is traditionally- Funnily enough, my, my mother art. just recently took just up crocheting. Powerful, beautiful magic. And we wanted it to really feel like this is how she does magic is by manipulating these tangible strands. And the look of them was very much inspired by lace. Lace is very Southern Gothic. It's this like supernatural, living, sort of sentient material. Music I was time? looking for a strong blend of diegetic music, you know, using instruments and musical styles that are common to the various regions of the game that we were inspired by from the real South. I remember David coming back from a trip to the South and he, he had this epiphany, he told me, that he wanted the action to equal uh, musicality right. and I was very intrigued with this creative direction you know it's like okay how do we do that after knowing we needed action equals musicality we thought of Olivier de Riviere because he not only is he a great composer he's also an amazing interactive music specialist We wanted the music to he be sounds very familiar. Much, uh, involved into the world in itself and illustrate the world as much as capturing what the player is doing moment to moment. You know, it goes like ba, 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 ben, ben, ben. But the more we're talking, the more I understood why. His name sounds talking. familiar. I think I know this composer. Like, okay, do a perfect like he's done a game in the past perfect, or some games you know, in the past like, that are just. Music, do a perfect his name music. is ringing it a bell. It was quite the opposite. It was more like, okay, take the flavor of this, but make it your own. Take it to another land. There was something from the South, which is songwriting. And so we, as Compulsion, our writing team, and David supplied those lyrics for these songs. Molly, Molly, woman in white. She'll snatch you up if you go out at night. When you came here in the studio, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because right I would think that somebody with no such a backstory in his voice should be older. It's something that's sort of in your soul, I guess, from the time you're born. I always said I'm kind of a, you know, 25-year-old man in a 60-year-old body, you know? <laughs> it was important that it feel real. It's performed by people from the regions where the music is played or where the music originated. Tonight. Yeah, going to Nashville was something. It's it's alive. It's just music all over the place. Walking up and down the main stretch, I think it's called Broadway, hearing all the music coming out, like seeing these performers, being able to go to the RCA studio and meet our performers, it's just historic and I think influences how you make the game. And we wanted to work with these artists from the South, singers from the South, uh, fiddle players, drummers, um, organ players. David was from a, a gospel church in Nashville. And the chords and play style is just incredible. Meeting the choir and everyone's just got music running through their blood. It's amazing to be around and often left me feeling quite inadequate. Feel good about this? All right, let's try that. Last night under you're singing as the character. So you need to wear this sort of, okay, persona that is not you, and you need to perform as this persona. So it, it's it's always magical when it happens because the first takes, you know, it's like a little bit, you know, timid, a little bit like we don't know. And then I start to push and push and push and push.
audio design is wow they're really, really going all out for this game the more you embrace being a weaver the more of the music of the universe you hear during gameplay and we wanted the universe to literally talk to the player and we use children's choir voices and so the idea was like okay as you go through the level you will unveil the backstory of each creature and as you do this you will as well unveil the song but not in the way that is the final shape but rather in an unsettling sometimes disturbing way There is this entity that is very evil. And we said, okay, this is completely out of the scope of, let's say, guitars, banjo, all of this. This is like massive and it can take over, you know, yourself. So we were like, we need something that is completely different and something that is impressive. And that's why we picked up an orchestra for those moments. Oh. of us recording with everyone together is fairly rare, in fact, very rare. It puts a little bit more onus on the performance and making sure that the balance, the blend, all those musical details are really finessed. That was why we thought that was so interesting, like the orchestral textures which were felt out of place in the Deep South. By cleaning those zones of those entities, you removed the out of place, the orchestral textures, and replaced those with voices and with uh, grounded instrumentation and the ambience that returned. Wow. Why? Because it's more like he's putting me down. I guess he has me at the waist. She's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's like this. So she just exaggerate it more. Let's do one more. Yes, sir. Yes. Good look. Knees up. Last. Struggle, struggle. Yeah. The challenge is really the fact that a character like Hazel in a game like this hasn't really been done before, you know? And it hasn't been done in a way that really brings to light what it is like to be a young black woman in this time period with these challenges and the complexities that come with that. I mean, when I think about how many games are set in the South with a strong black female lead, I don't, I don't recall that many. That in itself shows how important this is. I think it's really cool that a little black girl could cosplay Hazel with the hair that's growing out of her head. It's nice to see yourself reflected in a piece of media and not in a way that feels stereotypical or inauthentic. Like Hazel, we can be weavers, we can be fairies, we can be magic users. We can do a lot more than just, I think, what people assign to the South. We hope that one day you'll be able to play a character like that. But it's really important that Hazel's story is relatable to a lot of different people. Like, I think you don't have to also be, like, a black woman to understand and relate to Hazel. You know, she's bad already, but then she's also, you know, opening up to her inner child. And then there's, it gets really dangerous at other times. She's kind of doing a little bit of it all. I think it shows how expansive this world is. Whether these people are humans or they're giant necrotic alligator, all of these creatures are worth helping and helping in the way they want. Beautiful. Well I think that's just a really strong message that there is a power in healing. You know, we can actually heal through our pain. And it's a journey of finding empathy for those who seem like they shouldn't receive any at all. 
I think that's really important. I think that's something that makes this game so important and so unique. I'm going to be sad to leave the world of Midnight. Having family that lives in the Deep South, there's just so much there from a cultural standpoint that just has endless depth and, and interest. This game has allowed us to really dive into that. I just want it to be something different. I want people to dive in and be like, I had never played anything like that before, or this was a totally new environment or very weird setting. I think people are gonna go into this and walk away seeing a lot of characters and locations they're not familiar with. I think it is unique and different. In the end, I'm even surprised by the, you know, the final music. I think everybody will be surprised. That's why it's a very big pleasure and a, a privilege to work on a production like this because art prevails. I think that it's important to show the folklore, the magic, and the creatures in the South and share them with the whole world. Oh yeah, this game is going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely incredible, I can already tell. Alright guys, that was the Weaving Hazel's Journey. Uh, South of Midnight documentary and again like wow you can tell that these people are putting love blood sweat and tears into this game and it's just it's already looking beautiful and like all the people have a really deep connection like to the game's story and to its concepts and to its art style like you can just feel the love they have for this game and I again I can already tell this game is going to be absolutely stunning and it's going to be absolutely amazing and I definitely a game I'm going to be checking out no doubt about it I am going to be playing this game but yeah those are my thoughts that's my reaction if you enjoyed this video please leave a like or comment down below I'd appreciate any all feedback subscribe I'm streaming on Twitch so please consider following me there at twitch tv slash just a game rank all together in word or you can click link below but what are your thoughts on South of Midnight I mean for those of you who live maybe in New Orleans and in that southern area like what are your thoughts on this just I would love to know but me personally again I'm just I'm already in love with this game and I cannot wait for it but regardless as always thank you for watching and until next time take care and have a good game